Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks for joining me once again. So in today's video, I'm going to continue my collection update from Australia. So you might recall that just recently I made a video showing the three vinyls I bought in Australia and I decided to separate it into two videos just because the amount of CDs I have is quite high, it's eight. So considering the way I often talk about albums, I don't, didn't want to make the video too long. Having said that, I'm going to try and make it a condensed version today because there's a lot of albums to get through. So um, eight CDs to talk about and it's a really eclectic mix of genres and shock horror, some of them are not metal. So, um, but there is some extreme metal in there for sure. And even though you may not like some of the releases that I talk about or those genres, um, it doesn't mean you have to unsubscribe. <laughs> and also, I think with the eight that I'm talking about, I've actually saved the best for last. And that's uh, extreme metal as well. All of these are in alphabetical order. But um, yeah, I think in my opinion, if you like extreme metal, it's worth sticking around until the end. So without further ado, I won't waste any more of your time and we'll just get straight into it. Okay, so first off, I picked up Autopsy with Morbidity Triumphant. So a lot of you are probably familiar with this album and have it already. Um, this was, until recently, this was the newest Autopsy album, but this band has a very prolific release schedule. So to my amazement, I realized the other day they, <clears throat> they have another new album out, which was just released. So this is the second one. It was released about two years ago. So time flies and the band's working very hard. But yes, as you may have heard me mention before, Autopsy are one of my favorite death metal bands. I like their unique style, which is sort of death doom, you could say. Like as um, a friend of mine once said, when I first played him Autopsy, he said it reminded him of Obituary Spliced with Black Sabbath. And I think that's quite interesting because it's kind of an accurate description. But having said that, there's so much more to this band, like um, particularly in terms of Chris Reifert's um, unique and varied vocals, in addition to the uh, blistering guitar solos, which are quite melodic from the guitar duo uh, Danny Corrales and Eric Cutler. So I think this band is definitely unique. And it's funny that I don't really like a lot of doom metal, but some death doom I do. And um, with a band like this, you have a really dark atmosphere. So um, yes, it always wavers between this band and Cannibal Corpse, which are quite different as among my favorite death metal bands. Yep, so this, ba this uh, album came out two years ago and it's what you would expect of Autopsy, that trademark sound. Um, it's a very rhythm driven release, like um, you know, the, the bass and drums drive the music and it's quite chaotic and fast sometimes, like controlled chaos. But um, again, Chris Reifert's uh, unique vocals, which are very impassioned and varied. It's not just monotonous, monotonous growling. That's what um, make the music on this album. And in addition to that, the guitar solos are fantastic. And my favorite aspects of Autopsy actually are when they slow down and go into those sort of open chord doomy sections because it invokes this really dark atmosphere. So you get that in spades on this album. It's sort of classic autopsy. Like um, ever since they were formed in 2010, 2011, I've still followed them a lot. Um, sometimes I think their more modern releases are a little bit samey, dare I say it, but um, yeah, still very good. Like this is a solid release. And so it's not reinventing the wheel. It's not groundbreaking for autopsy, but it's what you would expect of them. And that's exactly what you want, I suppose. Yeah, so what you have here are 10 tracks. I've listened to this a few times and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I wouldn't say it's blown me away as brilliant, but I still really think it's a good solid album. Um, because of the doom laden parts with the open chords being my favorite, my favorite songs actually don't include the singles. I think the singles were, what were they? Stab the Brain and Knife Slice Axe Chop, I think. Think? Yeah, but anyway, my favorites are as follows uh, track two, Final Frost, as well as track five, Flesh Strewn Temple, track six, Tapestry of Scars, and track ten, Slaughterer of Souls. And that's because those songs invoke the, that really sort of dark autopsy atmosphere, which is featured prominently on my favorite autopsy albums of all time, which are Acts of the Unspeakable and Shit Fun. I know most people say Severed Survival and Mental Funeral um, are their favorites, but for me, Acts of the Unspeakable and Shit Fun because they were really dark and disturbing, had a really dark atmosphere. So you get that on those four tracks that I mentioned, but the whole album is enjoyable, no bad songs. Yeah, like I said, I really do like this band. I just feel like with the later albums, they're not as 
they don't stand out as much as some of the earlier ones, but still a great solid band. So um, to show you the cover here, this is a pointless slip case, but it's cool because it removes the glare. And the artwork's pretty cool with this skeletal figure, kind of um, with a cloak made of dead skin surrounded by mummies and people strung up, so very appropriately morbid. There's the back photo picture of the band and all of the lyrics and band photos in here, so members of the band. I have to spend some more time with the lyrics actually. And I think they got a new bass player because their recent bass player left, so now it's uh, Greg Wilkinson on bass. Yep, but, and then in addition to Chris Reifert, Danny Corrales and Eric Cutler, sort of the classic autopsy lineup. Yep, and there's the disc. So yes, like I said, it's not groundbreaking for autopsy, it's what you would expect, but still a great solid album. So if you like that sort of dark, doom-laden death metal, which is uh, autopsy's trademark, you won't be disappointed. Yep, so that's autopsy with morbidity triumphant. And I said I wasn't going to speak long, maybe I lied. <laughs> okay. Coming up next, another death metal classic. This is one that I've wanted to have in the collection for a long time. I finally got it. This is Cancer with Death Shall Rise, which was their sophomore album from 1991. As you've probably heard me mention before, I think To the Gory End, their debut is my favorite, just because it's, um, even though the sound quality may sound like a demo, it's got those raspy vocals and it sounds, there's something really dark and sinister about that album. Having said that, this album is brilliant as well. Um, this was one of the first death metal albums I heard back in the day. My friend bought it, you know, that age where you couldn't really afford to buy a lot of CDs. So sometimes your friend bought some, then you bought some. But yeah, he bought this one. I, I really like it and I'm just amazed when I heard this in 1993. I really liked it, but just hearing it now, I just like it more than ever. It's just sort of really quality death metal with a thrashy element. I know a lot of people say this band sounds generic, but hey, wait a minute, this was 1991 when this came out, when death metal was fresh. So this band was actually making this music before most other bands were. And um, in addition to that, it was the trio of Carl Stokes on drums, Ian Buchanan on bass, John Walker on guitar and vocals, but they added James Murphy as a lead guitarist. So James Murphy, and this is a British band, obviously. So James Murphy was the American guitarist from bands such as Death, Obituary, Disincarnate, etc, etc. Yeah, so this was produced by Scott Burns, which means it, it really stepped up in terms of the production quality from the first album, in my opinion. And it's just really fun, catchy, enjoyable, death thrash, like classic death metal, really old school sound. By, by today's standards, it's nothing innovative, innovative, but by those day standards, it definitely was. This was fresh, but just brilliant. I really like it, and when I listened to this, it was a pure nostalgia trip, but it's just, I suppose, you know, when over the years, when you listen to more and more death metal, your ears become more trained, and um, now I've just realized just how catchy and awesome this album is. Really memorable songs, great guitar solos. The vocals aren't as raspy as they were on the first one. They're, they're more sort of low-pitched, I, I guess, but they're, they're not completely guttural, so it's still got that kind of British accent behind um, John's vocals, which I love. And um, the drumming is what makes this such a bouncy, catchy band. So just everything, you can hear the bass well, which adds to the thickness and heaviness. Just brilliant. Yeah, so um, all of the songs on this are really good. Like it opens with Hung, Drawn and Quartered, which is fantastic. Brilliant guitar solo in that and a nice galloping, thrashy pace. Uh, Tasteless Incest, despite the dark theme, has a really catchy chorus, like almost sing-along chorus, which is ironic, I think. But uh, yeah, brilliant chords in that. Burning Casket, memorable chorus again. Death Shall Rise, of course, the, the title track. Uh, brilliant lyrics in that, especially the opening couple of lines. You know, maggots eating rotten flesh, chomping through a fucking mess. Um, then, our oh, Back From The Dead. Just classic, those open chords, sort of doomy, heavy chords, and like slowly injecting the, the fluid of pain bringing the corpse back to life. It's real headbang material. You, you watch the video clip of that song, the band is fully into it, it's great. Um, then we also have Gruesome Tasks, Corpse Fire, and Internal Decay, but there's not one track I dislike on this. Yeah, it's just brilliant and enjoyable, fun listen from beginning to end if you like death metal or death thrash. It's got that kind of, kind of thrashy element and the production is excellent thanks to producer Scott Burns. So on the back you've got a picture of the band, now as a four-piece at that time. 
Yeah, I like the, the cover of this. I know a lot of black metal bands were sort of straying away from this, saying it's too colourful, but I think it's really iconic anyway. And um, some liner notes about this album, which I, I'm still yet to read, to be honest. I'm always hopeless with that. Now that I have a magnifying glass, I'll be able to actually read it. <laughs> yep, all of the lyrics here. Yeah. So, you guys probably don't need to know about this, you've probably heard of it before. It's sort of one of those iconic albums, but like I said, a lot of people criticise this album and band as being generic and boring, but like I said, for its time it was amazing, and for these days, I just find it so thoroughly catchy and enjoyable. So just good quality, fun, old school death metal. That's Cancer with Death Shall Rise. Alright, so with the next few releases, I'm straying into non-metal territory. So, um, I've mentioned before that I have an eclectic taste in music and I like a variety of genres, so that explains what's coming next. So with a lot of these albums, I just saw them in the shop and thought, oh yeah, I haven't heard that in a while, so I'll pick them up. So up next, this is Cypress Hill with album four, 1V or four. So remember the first four albums, they were just had numerical, Roman numerals, sorry, like uh, the Led Zeppelin albums. Yep, so this is their, the fourth album. And back in the day, I like my brother and a lot of friends listened to hip hop, so I was kind of exposed to it, although it was not my favorite style of music. So this was kind of a nostalgia trip to get this one. But having said that, as you know, I do like some rap and hip hop occasionally for something different. And I would say that Cypress Hill is one of my favorite bands, especially because of the unique vocals of Be Real, you know, that kind of nasal twang that he's got. In addition to the fact that with Cypress Hill, it's actually music. Like a lot of people think rap music is just talking over drums or bass or something like that, but the musicianship in uh, Cypress Hill's music is incredible. Like they use guitars, brass instruments, keyboards, you know, everything. So it is really quite musical. And having said that, they also have some minimalist hip hop tracks, which I also like, depending on the, the mood. So um, yeah, I think of the four albums, this is gonna shock some people. I think most people say Black Sunday was the best. That was Cypress Hill too. For me, yeah, that's okay, except um, it's been overplayed a bit and um, sort of overkilled, I suppose. And in addition to that, some of the songs on it which were really famous I didn't like, like Hits from the Bong, which uses the loop from Son of a Preacher Man. I find that song quite depressing, actually. And album number three, that's the really sort of dark, dreamy one in a kind of depressing, druggy way, I suppose. So, yeah, not really for me. But um, yeah, this one and number one, one is very raw and sort of, um, you know, alley kind of rap, but this one is the most musical. It's very upbeat compared to part, part three especially, so I really like this one. Um, so many good songs on this. Again, I don't really dislike any, and um, they also feature a couple of skit tracks from Cheech and Chong, you know, the uh, famous comedy duo. So um, just seeing if I can get a point of reference for this. Yeah, so it opens up with looking through the eye of a pig, that's good. Um, Checkmate is a great upbeat track. Um, From the Window of My Room is another great track. Uh, Riot Starter, that's a really heavy track. And later on when they started incorporating guitars into their music, they, they sort of do a metal version of that live, which is cool. Uh, one of my favorites is Steel Magnolia because it invokes this really sort of um, Hispanic LA atmosphere. I can't describe it, but the musicianship on that is fantastic. Um, also the track I Remember That Freak Bitch, a bit politically incorrect and quite crude, but it features some guest rappers who rap really fast in that. Of course the lyrics in that song are very deliberately over the top and, you know, trying to shock, I think, but, um, you know, it's, I don't think it's to be taken seriously. They're doing it to, uh, yeah, for shock value, but uh, some really talented rapping on that song. Um, Tequila Sunrise is another favourite, like, good memorable chorus in that. And um, yeah, also Dr. Green Thumb, that's an example of minimalist hip hop, like just bass, but it's so catchy, really good song. And um, I just like the lyrics in that song a lot. They're, they're pretty funny. In addition to High Times, very memorable lyrics in that song. So this is sort of, how would I say, it? it's sort of like the upbeat party album for Cypress Hill. So if you're looking for something to put on at a party, something that's a bit more upbeat and energetic and not depressing, then yeah, this is definitely a, a great one. So um, I'll just show you the, the disc here. So same as the cover. And I like the theme, the, you know, the skeletal figures with all the green. 
appropriate. And um, yep, just the track listing here and picture of the band. So I think it is still the same lineup. So Be Real, Send Dog, and Mugs as the DJ, I think. Yeah, but um, I always thought that this album got overlooked. In my opinion, it's a very underrated Cypress Hill album and probably my favorite, at least of the first four. So that's Cypress Hill 4. Great if you like hip hop. Okay. Okay, up next we're going into some pop rock. So I don't need to say much about this album, it's just a classic. This is In Excess with Kick. Yeah, I saw it in the shop and thought, yeah, I just have to get it. You may have heard me mention before in my Guilty Pleasures video, not that I have Guilty Pleasures, but um, it's, this was the first band I would say that I really liked. So you know when you're young you like songs and things like that, but this was the first group that I actually listened to when I was a kid and I got introduced to them by a, an older cousin who was really into them. And um, yeah, just really good quality, catchy Australian pop rock. This album sold millions worldwide. Um, and yeah, it's just a classic. I really like the cover art here with the pictures of band, members of the band and the skateboard. It's just kind of iconic. Michael Hutchins, the vocalist here. And who is that? Kirk Pengilly and one of the beers, Gary Gary Beers, someone like that. Yeah. But um, yeah, this is just a classic album. So catchy, so well produced, such memorable songs. Everything about it is good. I know a lot of people into extreme metal may say, I hate In Excess, and I've heard a lot of other people who just generally say In Excess are a boring band. I disagree. There are some albums which are fantastic. This is undoubtedly my favorite. I used to listen to this album on my Sony Walkman in the 80s. <laughs> so that's a, a bit of a time capsule for you. But um, this album is famous for so many songs. I think the singles on this album were New Sensation, and Never Tear Us Apart, which um, that they are great songs, like I've heard them a million times, but they're still really good. Never Tear Us Apart is a kind of sappy song, but it is a good ballad. New Sensation, of course, is great, but as always, the songs which are my favourites are the deep cuts, so the album opens with Guns in the Sky, which is sort of the closest that In Excess have ever done to a metal song. It's just very minimalist with this just repeated heavy guitar riff, but what makes it interesting is Michael Hutchins' vocals, because he does a lot of freestyling and variation, which is just incredible. So it makes a one riff song sound so varied. In addition to that, it's got this really sort of screechy, disordered feedback guitar solo in the middle. It's brilliant, the, the, uh, the chorus is fantastic. And when I've seen their performance of this at Wembley Stadium, and it's just awesome, I would love to hear that song live. So Guns in the Sky is great. Devil Inside is also a good one, a bit of a dark song with the use of some bongo drums. Oh, Need You Tonight was the other single, so everyone knows that song. Uh, Mediate has got some interesting atmosphere. The, perhaps the one song I dislike on this album, or not dislike but just not like as much, is The Loved One, which is a cover song from an old Australian band. It's not bad, but just nothing special to me. Going over to the side too though, Wildlife is a fantastic song, like great atmosphere, especially with use of keyboards on that song. Mystify, you know the song which starts with the piano, that is a really just iconic in excess song and I really do like it, like the lyrics, the melody, everything. Fun song to sing at karaoke too, but you've got to be drunk. Kick is a good song as well. Calling All Nations, so Kick is the title track. and. Um, Calling All Nations, another deep cut, but that's one of my favorites, and it closes with Tiny Daggers. So, um, yeah, no bad tracks on this. The only one I don't like as much is The Loved One, and probably my favorites, actually, are Guns in the Sky, Wildlife, and Calling All Nations. So I'm not just saying that to be different, but the deep cuts are the most interesting because you they get the less radio play, and also those songs are just fucking awesome. All right, so just showing you the disc here. Quite minimal. So yeah, iconic cover art here. Okay, and it's got all of the lyrics and then pictures of the rest of the band. So there's the full band, very cool. Yep, so I know it might not be everyone's cup of tea, but I really like In Excess, especially this album. If there's one album that I think is essential, it is Kick, so definitely check it out. That's In Excess with Kick. All right, are we going for time? I've got four more, so. I'll try not to waste more of your valuable time, or take up, I should say. I don't regard it as wasting thus far, or I hope not. Okay, so the next one, some more pop rock. And again, this will probably su surprise some people, but I saw it and I had to get it. This is Paul Simon with Graceland. So, Paul Simon, a New Yorker, 
he was formerly in the group Simon and Garfunkel, the, the duo, and then he formed his solo career. So this is just really interesting atmospheric pop rock, which incorporates some influences from African music, because I think he spent some time there and got involved in African music. But um, what, I, what I think makes Paul Simon's music so interesting is his voice. Like he's just got a great singing voice. He really makes these songs shine and so distinctive and you can hear his personality inside the music. It's not just some singer singing along. In addition to that, his, um, his lyrics are really weird and sometimes almost nonsensical. You can't really fathom the meaning, but that's what I find interesting about them. It's sort of like open to interpretation, a bit like Dio or something like that. But um, yeah, yeah, and wh when I heard this, I hadn't heard it in years and I just, it, it brought back a lot of memories because my parents bought this album in the 80s, so when I was growing up, you know, you listen to a lot of your parents' records. This was one of them, and it used to be my favorite kind of out artist or group at the time when I was about eight years old or something. So yeah, really good nostalgia trip. I still enjoy it thoroughly these days. Uh, I like most of the tracks on this. Um, just show you the booklet first before I talk about the music. So long detailed liner notes. I'll have to get to this with my magnifying glass and all of the lyrics. And there's a picture of Paul on the back. Here's the disc. Looking at the songs on this, there's no bad ones, none that I dislike. It's, of course, the famous single from this was You Can Call Me Owl. And I do like that song. That, that was my favourite when I was a kid. Except it has been a bit overplayed now. And I think they made a mistake making the video clip with Chevy Chase just sitting there, like, miming the lyrics. Like, he's just there on the couch pretending to sing. It sort of makes a mockery of the song, so I don't like the clip, but still a good song. But uh, yeah, The Boy in the Bubble, great dark atmosphere, melodic song. Graceland is probably one of my favorites, especially the chorus with the bass line and everything. You know, like where after he says, I'm going to Graceland, Memphis, Tennessee, I'm going to Graceland, the line which comes after, brilliant. Um, I Know What I Know, such a great catchy song, and that incorporates some African vocals in that, like sort of tribal African vocals, and interesting lyrics in that song, like, I don't know what they mean, but it's funny. Um, the ones I don't like as much maybe are Gumboots and Diamonds on the Soles of Her Shoes, but they still have good moments, so I don't dislike them, they're just ones that don't stand out to me as much. Yeah, Under African Skies, that incorporates some African choirs in that. Homeless was the instrumental track, which is like done purely with uh, vocals, and again, African tribal vocals. Uh, tracks 9 and 10, Crazy Love. Oh no, Crazy Love, that's a good song, like very catchy and melodic chorus. That Was Your Mother, to be honest, that's track 10. I can't really remember that song, so I'll have to check that out again. And then it ends with All Around the World or The Myth of Fingerprints, so alternative titles, but they're really good. So yeah, I would just say I really love 90% of this album and it's just a fun, catchy, nostalgia trip. So if you like, if you're open-minded and you like pop rock music, I would definitely re recommend checking this out. I remember when I bought it in the shop, the Scottish woman said, oh yeah, this album is really good. And then she laughed at the other one I bought and I'll tell you what that is later. But yeah, this is Paul Simon with Graceland. So classic album. All right, how are we going for time? Not too bad considering I have eight CDs. Okay, so up next, this is the one where people might be saying, what the fuck? I'm surprised, but yes, this is Phil Collins with But Seriously. So everyone knows Phil Collins, uh, formerly a member of Genesis, and you know, he was a drummer and vocalist. Uh, then he formed a very successful solo career. I googled him. He was the most successful solo artist of the 80s. And I know he gets a lot of flack and criticism, like people say, oh, it's snooze rock, it makes you fall asleep and it's very boring. But I think it really captures the essence of retro 80s pop rock music like you've got to admit he wrote some iconic songs and sort of those big hits are my favorites so um yeah I bought this album not knowing much about it and if I'm gonna be completely with honest with you I'm not saying it's boring but a lot of the songs to me are that kind of light pop rock which sort of descends almost into ambience that kind of music where it would be good playing quietly at an English pub if you're having a beer and doing the crossword, something like that. Which is not, no, it's not bad, like sometimes you need some mellow stuff. But what I'm saying is not a lot, a lot of the songs are standing out to me at the moment. But that doesn't matter because the main reason I bought this album was for track four, which is Something Happened on the Way to Heaven. So if that title means nothing to you, 
uh, you may remember the chorus, how many times do I have to say I'm sorry, that's the song. So um, the reason why I became obsessed with that song was a couple of years ago, I was eating a meal at an Irish pub and everything about this pub was Irish and British and they played that song and I just thought, wow, the vocals on this song are fantastic, I really like them. So um, they make the song infectious in addition to the keyboards, the backing vocals and the snare hit on that track. It just, it's addictive and when I heard that song it just stuck in my head for days on end. So you have to be careful with that song, something happened on the way to heaven because it's incredibly catchy like an earworm. But um, brilliant, it's also an eargasm. So yeah, something happened on the way to heaven is the reason I bought this. The other big hit from this album was, sorry, someone outside parking in front of my house, in front of my driveway, how dare they. And the other track was Another Day in Paradise. So yeah, that's a little bit of a depressing song, but it has a meaningful, poignant message. Uh, and it was, it was like, that's another sort of iconic song from the 80s. But yeah, I, I need to spend more time with this, but I re like I said, I really just bought it for something happened on the way to heaven and it was worth it for that song alone. So remember, just be warned with that song. It's a bit too catchy for its own good. So here we have the disc, front cover of Phil, and all of the lyrics here and some photos. The lyrics are in this handwriting, so they're kind of hard to read, but the good news is with this kind of music, you can actually understand what the singer's saying. Yeah, so um, just for some, you know, sometimes we all need some light listening or something mellow or chilled, at least I do, to clean my ears up, and it's worth it for that track alone, something happened on the way to heaven, but this is Phil Collins with But Seriously. Okay guys, so two more to go. Okay, up next, this one might surprise people as well. I also picked up Tool with Enema or Anima. So of course, Tool was an absolutely huge band in the mid 90s. You know, with that indie slash alternative scene, alternative rock scene, which was just exploding at that time. Tool were revered as legends. And I'll be honest, having said that though, I am not a really huge fan of Tool. I wouldn't say I'm a die-hard fan or even a big fan actually but the reason I bought this is because some of my friends in the 90s listened to this and you know like when you spend time with your friends they expose you to different types of music so often when I went to their houses they were playing this album so this album is more of a nostalgia trip for me but having said that I still really enjoy some of the songs like um, Tool is kind of alternative metal you can say where what I mean by that is it's sort of indie slash alternative music but it's it's combined with sort of heavier riffs. It's got that metallic edge, but it's not metal metal or heavy metal, but um, yeah, still just interesting and creative. I, I like listening to bands which sound distinct and different and Tool definitely do, especially with um, the vocalist, what's his name? Maynard James Keenan, I think, but um, I think he's got a fantastic voice, very atmospheric and very full of emotion. And this band has a variety of textures, you know, they really understand volume, like you have the loud explosive parts and then the sort of softer, more tranquil moments in the songs, but um, it just melds together really well. So um, really weird lyrics again, and I don't really understand them, but um, yeah, ultimately it's the music that counts. So here's this kind of minimalist artwork. And oh, showing previous releases. Then they've got the track listing and a picture of Bill Hicks, the comedian, which is interesting. The late comedian, I should say. Um, and battery, story of my life. There's the disc. Okay. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't say a lot of the songs on this album, they don't stand out to me too much and they sort of descend into ambience. But I think this, this kind of music, it's good for playing in the morning when you have a busy day or you have stuff to do around the house. It's just good background music. And I don't mean that in a derogatory way. I really enjoy it. a lot of atmospheric moments on this album, which I love. And while I don't like all of the songs, my favorites are undoubtedly. So the opening track, Stink Fist, that's like really catchy song, great vocals in that, very powerful and heavy. And also track two, Eulogy, um, which is again, like got a great memorable heavy chorus and the clean vocals done by Maynard in that song are just so atmospheric that it's an eargasm. So Eulogy is probably my favorite song on the album and some great sort of metallic chugging riffs after that chorus. Um, and other, other favorite songs? 
probably for me, track 10, Die Eier von Satan. So that translates from German into English, the eggs of Satan, but in German, Eier, eggs, is actually slang for balls. So that song means the balls of Satan. And what's interesting about that song is it's kind of a dark industrial song. So it's industrial music with a German speaker over the top speaking in this very dark, impassioned voice and it gets angrier and more dramatic as it goes on and there are crowd cheers in the background. So I, um, if you actually, I, I know German and I also researched the significance of the song, the lyrics are actually talking about the recipe for hash cakes without eggs. So, und keine Eier, without eggs. And um, I heard someone saying that with the delivery of uh, the vocals and the, the rallying crowd cheers in the background, someone said it's also a mockery of Nazism. I'm not sure, but the um, actual song, it's just so dark, like this industrial loop which they use, it's incredibly just dark and haunting. One of the scariest songs I've ever heard, and that's coming from someone who likes black metal and dark ambient. So, the music is fantastic and you know German is a very dark gothic guttural language so like as the vocals get angrier and angrier and the crowds cheering it's actually quite scary so it makes my the the uh, hairs on my arm stand on end when I hear that song so the Eier von Satan also a great track and then Push It is really good as well track 11 because it's got some great clean guitars which invoke a fantastic atmosphere so yeah like I said not one of my favorite bands by any stretch but I still like it it's just something fresh and something different for me in comparison to the music I normally listen to great background music great morning music yeah um, I know a lot of people don't like this band and I understand I'm not a huge fan either but I still enjoy it from time to time so very happy to get this that's tool with enema or anima all right and the last one, I've saved the best for last in my opinion, even though I'm going in alphabetical order. I don't really have, you know, people talk about having grails, like rare releases that they really want. I don't really have any per se, apart from Marduk's Dark Endless on vinyl with the original artwork. Even though I've heard that's not difficult to get, but I still don't have it. But this one, I would regard as, it wasn't an, inten an intentional grail, but as soon as I saw it, I snapped it up because I thought, this is rare and it's hard to get. So, up next. This is Fuck You, We're From Denmark. So you can see this is a various artists album. So 100% death metal. So this is a death metal compilation consisting solely of Danish bands from 1994. So I'll just tell you a quick story about this. You know, when I discovered this kind of music, it was 1993, but in 1994, when the music was still very fresh, at that same shop where I was introduced to Dismember and Cancer, bands like that, the guy had this and I said to him, oh, what's this compilation like? And he was a very sort of chilled, mellow guy. And he said, oh yeah, fuck you, we're from Denmark. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's a good compilation featuring um, death metal bands ranging from really groovy death to extreme death metal. And of course, because it was all fresh, it really interested me. However, I didn't have any money at the time and I wasn't, I was still new to it all, so I didn't buy this. But Fancy that almost 30 years later, I saw this in a shop secondhand in Tasmania and went, yep, I'm gonna buy it. And this was the album I bought with Paul Simon's Graceland. So the Scottish woman said, uh, Paul Simon was great. And then she saw this one and laughed and she goes, that's a good title. But yes, so fuck you, we're from Denmark, 100% death metal. What you have here is 15 Danish bands playing different styles you know, of death metal. And again, this was at a time when death metal was fresh, 1994. So 15 bands featured on this, which are Condemned, Angel Accelerator Death, Infernal Torment, Revolting Phimosis, Coitus Interruptus, Stone Age, Chaosium, Saturnus, Autumn Leaves, Discomposure, Mercenary, Idiosyncrasy, Nugatory, Catharsis, and Goat. So they are the 15 bands. And um, yes, it was like the guy in the shop said to me, it's very varied death metal, like some songs are really extreme and blasting and guttural, other ones are very groovy, but overall it's just a really enjoyable, varied listen by all these underground bands. And um, yeah, it's funny, like of those Scandinavian countries, Denmark isn't generally known as being a sort of prominent country for death metal or black metal, even though they do have some great bands, but um, this proves otherwise. But um, yeah, it starts with a very crude introduction here where the guy says, like the very other important assholes before me, I was asked to do an introduction for the volume three of Fuck You, We're From Denmark. Another 15 death thrash bands from the Danish underground. And he says in a very crude way, 
that some of them are really good, others shouldn't give up their day jobs, and others are fucking terrible, basically. But um, it makes it a fun lesson. I agree with that assessment. What's cool about this is, with each band, they have the logo and the photo, and rare for a compilation, they have the lyrics for each song by each band. Yeah. So again, I need to spend more time with these lyrics. Ultimately, it's the music which counts. And um, yeah, so some, some, of the, some of the songs on this album are pretty bad, but how's my band going? <laughs> so yeah, yeah, but um, we'll get into that in a moment. Okay, so um, of, of the bands on this, probably my favorites are Angel Accelerator Death. That's track two. With, their song is called Spontane Love. Uh, tra track three, which is by the band Infernal Torment. Track four, which is by the band Revolting Phimosis. And probably my two favorites on the album are track seven and eight. So track seven is by Chaosium, that's Victim's Grave. And track eight by Saturnus, Beware of the Atheist. Like, um, they just have, especially track eight by Saturnus, that's just got some keyboards, some groove, and some sort of dark death metal atmosphere. So absolutely fantastic. Um, the one band on this album which I think is terrible is the last band, which is Goat. And um, you can see here, there's a picture of him. He looks a bit like, to me, he looks a bit like um, Lord Satanakia from Azazel. <laughs> and um, when I saw this, I thought, oh, he's like, Goat is like a death metal equivalent of uh, Nutterfrost from Carpathian Forest, you know, sort of like that G.G. Allen-esque image and lyrics and everything. But the difference is, with Nutterfrost, while he wrote some absolutely offensive and reprehensible lyrics, his music was actually very good. Whereas with Goat's music and lyrics, they're absolutely terrible. It sounds like a squealing pig. It's just awful. And um, the lyrics are really bad as well. So like a lot of broken English. And I think that's deliberate. Like I'm not making fun of him because like about grammar because he's Danish. I mean, I'm sure if I tried to write a song in Danish, I, <laughs> I'd be in trouble, but um, I think they're deliberately broken English, but the lyrics are bad, like uh, Goat take your life in Goat's hand as you follow Goat's command. Next time Goat comes for you, Goat fucks you, life is through. <laughs> and that's one of the better lyrics in the song. But um, yeah, so, but it, it's good just for the novelty, like I like the fact that they include some terrible bands in this, but yeah, as I said, probably my favourites on this are Chaosium, Saturnus and Autumn Leaves. I'm not sure if they went on to do anything else after that but uh, yeah really good so if you enjoy underground death metal and you see this this is volume three I would also recommend getting volumes one and two but I think it's very hard to find it's a holy grail so I'm glad I picked this up so that is fuck you we're from Denmark by various artists all right guys so this video has gone on for a very long time there are parts I'm going to edit out so it'll be a bit shorter but I do apologize there are eight albums when I find music interesting, I can't help talking about it, so thanks for your patience. I'm going to leave it here. I'll be back again soon with another episode, and I'm going to make that a surprise, but I'm really looking forward to doing that one because it's talking about one of my favorite bands, so stay tuned. Okay, so thanks again, everyone, for all of your support. Thanks to the new subscribers and the existing subscribers. Really appreciate everyone watching, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Cheers.